become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts and explore the various courses, click on the link shared in the description just below the video. Register and check out the different courses to become an expert in static equipment design. So what are the different types of testing which are going to be followed in the industry and in as per section at division 1. So hydro test very safe and most recommended way of testing as the water uh, <clears throat> is a very safe medium it is not getting reacted with any of the component and it is non-hazardous if it is released to the atmosphere it won't create any problem so it is very safe and why it is safe it is not just because we are using water or some medium which is non-hazardous to the environment it is because uh, the water is non-compressible fluid when we are saying non-compressible it not practically non-compressible non-compressible fluid means what if we are going to pressurize it it is not getting compressed as uh, the other gases are let's say if i'm going to compress the air it can be compressed let's say it is having one meter cube as a volume and if i'm going to compress it so it can be get compressed to any multiple times of its volume so that one meter volume can be reduced by pressurizing to even one centimeter cube also so it is depends upon how much you want to compress that you can compress any gas but when we are dealing with liquid let's say the water the water cannot be compressed a one meter cube water volume cannot be compressed and uh, can be uh, can become let's say one centimeter it will never going to happen so the water will be getting compressed by a very very little amount mu uh, maybe few milliliter ml right so let's say it might be only few mls which are going to uh, get reduced in the volume and it can create a huge pressure so uh, as compared to the gases if the gas uh, gas needs to be pressurized so it has to be uh, pressurized or uh, the volume needs to be reduced or compressed by multiple times unlike in case of uh, liquids even if it is compressed by a little amount it can give you very high pressure the so same phenomena is uh, true when there is any leakage comes into the picture so when we are dealing with the water so let's say I'm having a pressure vessel that contains the water that is under pressure. We have pressurized that and let's say that uh, pressure vessel having some weld joint and that weld joint is very weak and from that other leakage will happen. So to release the pressure, to release the pressure means what? The atmospheric pressure is outside and inside the vessel there is a large pressure. So unless and until both these pressure are getting equilibrium, under equilibrium or having the same value. Uh, the pressure will come out from the uh, pressure vessel and it will release to the atmosphere. Uh, the pressure will flow from higher pressure to lower pressure. So, to keep these two pressures in equilibrium, the amount of liquid that needs to be discharged from that leakage will be very small. So, let's say few ml of water, if uh, it uh, come from that leakage path, then the pressure will be suddenly dropped down and the uh, pressure will be equalized. Unlike in case of the gases if let's say there is some leakage and let's say the uh, pressure inside is 100 bar or 50 bar so to release uh, this 100 bar pressure and to become it as one atmospheric pressure or which is an environmental pressure the amount of energy that needs to be released from that uh, smaller path it needs to release multiple times of the volume of that uh, vessel so because it is under compression so at atmospheric condition, let's say there is only 10 liter volume might be incorporated. But now we have the volume which is equivalent to 1000 liters. So that 1000 liters needs to be released from that leakage path and it has to be happened in fraction of second so that in smaller amount of time, such a huge energy needs to be released and the path is so small. So what will happen? the equipment will get actually burst into the pieces because if we observe the same in case of the balloon if the balloon is filled with the water and if i am going to puncture it with the pin what will happen a small fountain will come out but if the same uh, balloon is uh, in flatten with the help of air and if i am going to pin that then what will happen there won't be any air as if a fountain will come out the balloon will burst itself 
because from that small pin volume a lot of air needs to come out and since the volume was not uh, area was not sufficient it will burst that uh, balloon and then it will uh, went off so this is the difference between the pneumatic and hydro test pressure that's the reason why hydro test is more safe because even a smaller amount of liquid come out then the pressure will get uh, in equilibrium and we can say uh, it won't explode otherwise in case of even in case of our vehicles also uh, if there is a uh, if there is a puncture or let's say uh, we have seen that many a times that uh, the car or uh, two wheelers uh, tires are getting bursted or the tubes are getting bursted why because air is the media which is there if it is uh, there is some puncture then what will happen if there is some a uh, small pin hole is uh, going to make over there then what will happen because of that pin hole the air tries uh, tries to come out from that smaller area and it will burst that tire itself so that's the hazard that a pneumatic test is uh, can create so that's the reason why pneumatic test is not generally very preferable or popular because it involves a lot of risk or danger we can say so unlike that hydro test is very safe most recommended way of testing UG 99B. Now, if we want to calculate the pressures, there are some uh, uh, pressures at which we have to do the hydro testing, and the code has given uh, certain formulas for the same. So there are three to four methods of calculating this stress pressure has been given in the code for hydro hydro test. So one is UG 99B, another is UG 99B, and end note 35. We are going to see each and every in detail, but here we are just analyzing or uh, trying to understand what are the different uh, formulas or the methods by which we can calculate the amount of test pressure we supposed to uh, put on any vessel then ug 99c and then 27-4 mandatory appendix 27 and sub clause 4 so ug 99b ug 99b end note 35 and ug 99c ug 99b involves the MAWP that is maximum allowable working pressure UG 99B end note 35 involves the design pressure to which the multiplier will be getting multiplied with UG 99C is depends upon some calculated pressure how that calculated pressure needs to be calculated that we are going to see in detail and the fourth one is 27-4 that is hydro test for a glass lined vessel if you will be designing a glass lined vessel and you want to conduct the hydro test then you don't have to come to UG 99B uh, or UG 99 you have to go to 27-4 so there they have given the test procedure uh, according to which we need to perform the hydro testing for glass line vessels if you are not dealing with glass line vessels then 27-4 is not at all applicable to you